Hi friends, it's Dana here. It is apple season and there is nothing more American in my opinion than apples. And the reason why America is known for apples is because of a man called da Johnny Appleseed. Johnny Appleseed is often talked about when you're learning about things like tall tales. But the thing about Johnny Appleseed is the incredible things that he accomplished are actually real. He was a real man and he really did spread apple seeds all across the United States. He just didn't do it all by himself. <laughs> Let's read all about Mr. Johnny Appleseed in this book called Seed by Seed. It is by Esme Raji Cadell and it is illustrated by Lynn Ray Perkins. Here we go. When we look out our windows, what do we see? Tall buildings, stores, and parking lots. Buses and cars speeding by. Red lights and green lights and yellow lights and white lights. Our country is hard and electrical and moving, but it was not always this way. Once it was a tangle, a tangle, a tangle of roots and branches and wide tree trunks. Once you could not hear the, the engines of airplanes in the sky or the sounds of phones ringing. Maybe you could catch the creaking of a wagon wheel straining against the ruts in the road or the fall of an ax against wood. The bark of a dog, the crackle of a campfire, the chattering of squirrels, the pecking of a sap sucker, the slapping of water against a river bank, or the sound of the play of leaves turning silver gray green in the breeze. A shh, like whispered secrets for the bees to carry on. The moon shone on the snow until the land glowed like a pearl. The stars glinted in the sky and the candles flickered from their lamps. And in this quiet tree bough tangled world, the world before the cement was poured and the lights turned on, there lived a man of his time, John Chapman, better known as Johnny Appleseed. The tales of Johnny Appleseed are three parts legend and one part fact. Stories we're not sure are true. But the man, John Chapman, was real. He was born on September 26, 1774 in Massachusetts. He never drove a car or sent a basketball flying through a hoop. He never acted in front of a camera. He never wore a medal. He grew apples and offered them to the pioneers heading west. But wait, so what? A farmer? Why should we remember to him today more than 200 years later and call him a hero? I will whisper the answer to you, a secret silver gray green. He lived by example. And of the many footsteps he took across the frontier in his bare and knobby feet, he left five for us to fill. Use what you have, share what you have, respect nature, try to make peace where there is war. You can reach your destination by taking small steps. No one is certain why he began his work of planting apple trees he claimed that spirits and angels told him to be a messenger of peace and to grace the way to the West with an offering of fruit. What we do know is that by doing the same small act of planting seeds every day, Johnny Appleseed changed the landscape of our nation seed by seed, deed by deed. What examples did he plant for us? Use what you have. Most apples around the start of the 19th century were grown for making cider. John Chapman started his nurseries of apple trees by obtaining apple seeds from owners of cider presses in Western Pennsylvania who were just going to throw the seeds away. 
Chapman dressed in coffee and potato sacks or wore used clothing that was given to him by people trading for his trees. Some say he carried his tin cooking pot on his head like a hat. He had a style all of his own. Share what you have. Chapman was rich in coin and rich in friends. He sold and traded trees to pioneers, but if a person could not afford them, Chapman would still allow that person to take saplings and pay when, it, when and if she or she, he or she was able. Chapman had 11 brothers and sisters and they helped one another out when they could. Besides his love for apples, Chapman also had a strong affection for reading, especially books by a religious man named Emanuel Swedenborg, who preached love, tolerance, and faith. It is said that John Chapman used his open shirt as a pouch to carry his books. It is also said that he ripped books into chapters in order to circulate them between settlers. He liked to gather children in their families around him and delight them with story time. News right fresh from heaven, in this way, he was the frontier's first librarian. Third lesson, respect nature. John Chapman lived most of his life outdoors. He was a vegetarian and also had a vast knowledge of herbs and their uses. Besides planting apples, John Chapman liked to plant fennel, a bulb that smells strongly of licorice, and that and that he believed had medicinal powers. In some parts of the country, the fast spreading plant is still called Johnny Weed. It is said that he lived in peace with animals. Legend has it that he released a wolf from a trap and for a long time afterward, the wolf tamely followed him wherever he went. Once he slept at one end of a log with a bear and her cub at the other. Another time, when he noticed that his campfire was singeing the wings of mosquitoes, he doused the flames in order to save the insects. When he saw that an animal was being abused, he would buy that animal, nurse it back to health, and find it a good home. The only animal he was known to have killed was a rattlesnake. Though he acted in self-defense, he said he was said to have always felt badly for having taken that life. The Native Americans respected him for his spiritual bond with his surroundings, his kinship with all that grew and lived. John Chap, fourth lesson, try to make peace. John Chapman moved freely between Native American and pioneer communities, and he was trusted by both. I sow while others reap. He warned each side of the other's impending attack, usually by walking through a room and reciting a mysterious rhyme. Be sure my warning keep. You can reach your destination by taking small steps. John Chapman journeyed hundreds of miles across state lines on his own two feet or by canoe or the, on the waterways planting and maintaining his tree nurseries over 100,000 square miles. His trees flowered and fruited across the Ohio River Valley, and they were shared and carried off to homesteads far and wide. He grew so, so many apple trees that chances are that any apple you eat today is from a descendant of a tree planted by Johnny Appleseed. After catching pneumonia during an especially cold winter in 1845, John Ta Chapman passed away. His sweet spirit lives on in apples, the apples we eat, and in the seeds we plant to make our country and our world a better place. Seed by seed, deed by deed, Johnny Appleseed changed the landscape of a nation, and now it's your turn. One small deed every day. What seed will you plant? All right, friends, I hope you'd enjoyed that very good story about Mr. Johnny Appleseed. And I hope you find some apples for yourself so you can join in the spirit of the wonderful thing he left behind. All right, friends, thank you so much for reading with me. Bye.